Good morning. My name is Hiren Doshi, and today I'm going to talk about a very interesting topic: nail it before you scale it. Set up a solid reference model before you scale. The idea is if you don't nail, uh, if you don't have, uh, if you don't nail your teams earlier, what's going to happen is you'll have dysfunctions and you're going to scale your dysfunctions. So that's my topic today. And I'm going to take a very interesting case, case study uh, for one of the clients that I work for. A flagship product for a data storage giant, a storage management application that manages complex IT infrastructure. Can you imagine you install one software on this machine and you can manage the entire storage area network. It has NAS, it has CAS, uh, it has lots of devices, host. You can just manage everything from there. Reporting, planning, provisioning, everything. Yeah. Over $600 million of revenue every year, 250 different employees spread across three different continents, and 4,000 active customers. So the product was solid, robust. But we had a problem. The software was written 15 to 20 years back from then. So it had a lot, it was a monolithic code base, legacy code base. What will happen is, uh, there was a revolution that happened in terms of virtualization. The VMware software and everything came in. You put that software on one machine, that machine becomes 20 different hosts, 30 different hosts. The software was not scalable. We had huge, huge, huge technical debt. Uh, so a customer will say, you know what? Cisco has released a new firmware. Can you support it? Oh yeah, I will support it six months from now. Are you crazy? They have, they have released a new firmware. Why, can, why can't you support it? Well, we know our problems. We did not have any automation in place. If you touch something over here, something else broke, right? So the idea was you either change or you perish. So there was a dire need to do something immediately. With that in mind, we said, okay, what do we do? How do we change it? because this is 27 million lines of code written over 15 to 18 years. You cannot change it immediately. So how do you carve out one slice of the module? Take one module, slice it out, keep it in sustaining, and rewrite the entire application. So with that in mind, we carved out three Scrum teams, spread across three different geographies, cutting across different geographies. Oh, no, but Scrum says it, everything has to be co-located. Well, the challenge is we don't want any site to be left out. So let's form it this way. So with that, we formed it that way. So the idea is how do we carve out that reference model so that we can start scaling? Keeping that in mind, we also carved out Scrum of Scrums. We had Enterprise Ac Executive Action Team, and we had Meta Scrums. We ran it for a few, uh, for few sprints, and very soon we inspected and adapted. What were some findings? poor understanding of Agile Scrum because nobody went through any training. We said, okay, Scrum is so simple. Read the book. Read a black book written by Ken. Read it, we implemented it, and we fumbled very, very badly. So the next thing was, okay, how do you, how do you adapt? Formal trainings on Scrum, master, formal training for Scrum Masters, developers, we did that. Non-sustainable sustainable pace. We're trying to work on something, but there's so much ad hoc work that keeps on coming, keeps on coming. How do you manage it? So we said, okay, we need to do something. The Meta Scrum kicked in. Okay, can we have single prioritized ordered backlog that we can use? So that came into play. We said, okay, monolithic code base. We can't use that. We have to use restful architecture, something that is scalable, that can perform so well. So we get on, got into that. The decision latency was so bad because it was a hierarchical organization. You have to make one decision. It has to go through multiple layers. People were just, just unhappy, right? So with Scrum, things started improving. So that is our first model, that, that's the first learning. From here, we said, okay, how do we take it forward? Ruthless elimination of waste and impediments. Yeah, Because when you're doing new ways of working, continuous integration, continuous delivery, you need tools. So these tools, people need investment. People have to invest time, money. So these were put into place. Uh, environments, so the development team, they said, okay, we, we, we can get our hands on pre-production much, much later. How can we get it much earlier? So there was some investment that was made over there. Uh, there are so many impediments that are coming on because as they're moving along, there are so many dysfunctions that were just, that were just hidden. They started surfacing up. So how do you go after each dysfunction one at a time? Scrum of Scrums kicked in. Uh, enterprise executive team kicked in. We had our community of practices. Lots of things started happening. Again, we talked about the Meta Scrum. We had single ordered backlog. So with that in mind, we saw some results, some amazing results. Teams earlier silos. 
In six months, we had three scrum teams. We had established a reference model that we can use. Once we got that, we are quickly able to go to 18 scrum teams. Release from 12 to 18 months, we went to six months to quarterly. Planning Moscow to MVP to 80-20 rule. Yeah? Architecture restful, happiness index. We are losing customers, we are losing revenue. Unhappy, one out of five. Happy, three out of five. Very happy, 4.2 out of five. Defects, 20,000 plus defects. Very soon, we reduced it to 5,000 in six months and then we reduced it to less than 200. Revenue, down 100 million. We moved up to 50 million and then up 200 million. So what we are trying to say is, earlier we were not doing Scrum. What is Scrum? 12 ele 11 elements, three roles, five events, three artifacts. If you are doing that, we call you, we are doing Scrum. But over here we are not doing Scrum earlier. From there we moved to Scrum, but we were not releasing software. So for us, get to true Scrum as soon as possible. What is true Scrum? Release potentially releasable product increment every sprint. Yeah, that's the reference model that you want to set so that your scaling becomes linear. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Questions? Yes, what is the RESTful architecture? <laughs> Very good. So RESTful architecture is a style of architecture which is stateless which is very much uh, prevalent in the network storage industry. So you use a single URL to reach to any resource, which is very scalable, it performs quite well. That's what RESTful is. Okay, thank you.